Hi friends, have you ever thought why do we eat food? Yes, of course, because they are delicious and are the source of energy. In this module, we are going to study about different food items that we eat. Objectives Dear friends, at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to list nutrients and detect carbohydrate, proteins and fats in the food items. You will also be able to describe different vitamins with their roles and discuss the importance of minerals in the body. In addition to this, you will also be able to explain the importance of dietary fibers and water in the body, explain the importance of balanced diet and define deficiency diseases. Friends, we get excited when our mother cooks delicious food for us like dal, roti, sambar, idli, rice, etc. You might have noticed that after having food, we feel energetic and can perform various activities. Do you know the reason behind this? Food is actually a source of energy and bodybuilding material that we need to move on, keep ourselves warm and to develop or sustain and improve our health. Thus, food acts like a fuel to our body and we cannot survive for long without it. Now a question may arise that how do we get energy by eating food and why food is known as fuel for our body? Friends, food has five basic components in it. These are carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins and minerals. All these components together are called as nutrients. A body digests food and absorbs these nutrients to provide energy. Some nutrients help us fight against diseases. Do you know this fact that each food item contains all nutrients in different amount and each nutrient plays a different role in the body. Let us know about these nutrients one by one in detail. First, carbohydrates. Carbohydrates form an essential structural component of living cells. They are the main source of energy for animals. Carbohydrates include sugars, starch, fiber, etc. They are mainly found in wheat, rice, potatoes, corn and maize. You might have noticed that some children who do not drink milk become weak and are underdeveloped because milk contains required proteins for our growth. Meat, fishes, eggs, pulses, cheese and soybean are some other important sources of proteins in our diet. The major role of proteins is building and repairing of damaged tissues. Along with carbohydrates, they are also a source of energy. I know that you all love pizza, burger, cheese, etc. But your parents do not allow you to eat them regularly because such foods contain large amounts of fat. Fat supply us with energy. If we don't use up this energy, our bodies build up a store for future use as in form of body fat. This is the reason why people eating much oily food become obese. Ghee, oil, butter, cheese and milk are some main sources of fats. Friends, when you get ill and go to the doctor, then he advises you to take some fruits with light food because many of our body processes require vitamins present in foods and vegetables. They are required in very small amount. Here is a list of vitamins, their sources and their roles. You might have seen many advertisements of mineral rich food items. Now let's know why they are so important. Actually plants need minerals for growth. Besides this, a body also requires minerals in small quantities for all the chemical processes. 
potassium, calcium, iron, etc. are some common examples of these minerals. Let us know more about the sources and the role of these minerals using the next table. Dear friends, do you know that besides nutrients, dietary fiber also play an important role in our body. They are usually known as roughage. You need to know that roughage does not provide any nutrition to our body, but adds bulk. They are found only in plants, pulses, potato, fresh fruits and vegetables as the main sources of roughage. This helps our body to get rid of the undigested food. Now let us know about water, which is also an important constituent of our food. Our body gets most of the water in the form of liquid. In addition, we also add water while cooking the food. Water helps our body to absorb nutrients from the food. It is also helpful in throwing out some wastes from body as urine and sweat. As we know that all kinds of foods do not contain all the components. Our meals should have a balance of the different nutrients that our body needs for growing and maintaining good health. Such a diet is called a balanced diet. In other words, we can say that a balanced diet includes all the nutrients that our body requires in proper quantity. So we should accept the fact that having a balanced diet is the best way to live a healthy life. Friends, after knowing about the balanced diet, we should also know that if we don't take proper diet, then what will be the problems? I hope that you might have heard about deficiency diseases. These are the diseases that occur due to lack of nutrients over a long period and hence called deficiency diseases. Here is a list of some of the deficiency diseases and their symptoms. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins and minerals are the major nutrients in our food. In addition, food also contains dietary fibers and water. Carbohydrates and fats mainly provide energy to our body. Proteins and minerals are required for the growth and the maintenance of our body. Vitamins help us, vitamins help us in protecting our body against diseases. Balanced diet provides all the nutrients that our body needs in right quantities along with adequate amount of roughage and water. Deficiency in one or more nutrients in our food for a long time may cause certain diseases or disorders. These are called deficiency diseases. Food for starch. Before we start our experiment to test the presence of starch in food, let us first understand what is starch? Starch is a complex carbohydrate present in the food we eat. Starch is odorless, tasteless and white in color. What are the major sources of starch? Major sources of starch are rice, corn, wheat and potatoes. Let us start our experiment to test the presence of starch in food. Take a small quantity of rice in a petri dish. Make a fine paste of the rice using water. Put the paste in a test tube. Add a few drops of iodine solution with the help of a dropper. What do you observe? The sample turns blue-black, which confirms the presence of starch in rice. Note: Whenever starch reacts with iodine solution, it turns blue.
black. Test food for protein. Before we start our experiment to test food for protein, let us first understand what is protein. Proteins are large molecules consisting of amino acids which our body and the cells in our body require to function properly. Our body structure functions, regulations of the body cells, tissues and organs cannot exist without proteins. The muscles, the skin, the bones and many other parts of the human body contain significant amount of protein. In fact, protein accounts for 20% of the total body weight. What are the major sources of protein? The major sources of vegetable protein are soya bean, cereals, beans and groundnuts. Major sources of animal protein are egg, fish, meat and milk. Let us start our experiment to test the presence of protein in our food. Take a small quantity of mashed beans in a petri dish. Put it in a test tube and add some water. Add a few drops of copper sulfate solution to it with the help of a dropper. Then add a few drops of sodium hydroxide solution. What do you observe? The sample turns purple which confirms the presence of protein in the food sample. Note, whenever protein reacts with copper sulfate and sodium hydroxide solution, it turns purple. Test food for fat. Before we start our experiment to test food for fat, let us first understand what is fat? Fat is a nutrient essential for normal function of the body and living is not possible without it. Not only does fat supply us energy, it also makes it possible for other nutrients to do their jobs. What are the major sources of fat? Major sources of fat obtained from plants are mustard oil, coconut oil, and dry fruits. Major sources of fat obtained from animals are butter, ghee, and cheese. Let us start our experiment to test the presence of fat in food. Take a small quantity of dry fruits, such as cashew nuts or almonds in a petri dish. Rub it on a clean white paper. You will observe oily patches on the paper. Hold the paper against the light to see the oily and translucent patch clearly. The fat present in the food sample is what makes the paper oily and translucent. Test food for sugar. Before we start our experiment to test food for sugar, let us first understand what is sugar. Sugar is the generalized name for sweet carbohydrates which are soluble in water. They are composed of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. What 
other major sources of sugar. Major sources of sugar are fruits, milk, honey, and jaggery. Let us start our experiment to test the presence of sugar in food. Take a small quantity of glucose in a test tube. Add a few drops of Benedict's solution. Heat the test tube in water bath. What do you observe? The sample turns orange which confirms the presence of sugar in the food sample. Note. Whenever sugar reacts with Benedict's solution, it turns orange 